Hi everyone, I'm Kaylee Diedrich, the Global Records Manager for the WSSA, and I've got Aaron with me, who's also from the WSSA. Say hi, Aaron. Hello. We're going to look at a couple cycle videos, and we're going to show you the process of what we look at during video review. And we're assuming you're already familiar with the basic rules, so we're going to gloss over things like whether or not the cups are on the mat or performing the stack correctly. Instead, we're going to focus on the most common mistakes that we see from top stackers. So, okay, let's get started. Okay, so normally I go through and look at everything from when they walk up to the table through all their warm-ups and their attempts, but I'm going to jump right to this uh, fastest attempt, and we'll look at everything that I look at in a single attempt. So here, let's get to the part where he starts the timer. So he puts his hands down, and I'm looking to see if there's any contact with the cups when the timer is started, so as the hands lift off. And the big things here, right, are thumbs and whether or not the cups are moving, because it can be kind of hard with this angle to see it, but, you know, those are the things you look for. You look for thumbs gripping on the, on the side of the cup, and you look for the cup actually moving. Obviously, if the cup is moving, you've got a handle on it. Right, and especially if the hands are still down on the timer and the cups are moving, that's a clear sign that they are touching the cups when they start the timer. I'm also looking for wrist starts here. Um, I can see from this position uh, there is no wrist on there, it's just the hands. So let's keep going a couple frames. And you do everything frame by frame. I do. Yep. And we're just moving forward here. I'm going to go back one frame. Um, I see between these two frames, I'm just going back and forth, um, he, he's lifted off the timer between these two. Now looking at his left hand, I don't see any contact with the cups. I also don't see any movement between these two frames with those cups. So I'd say this is a clean start. So now after the first up stack, he has to let go and there has to be a separation between the two up stacks and that looks like it here. Now he's up stacking his six, and he lets go in between, so he's cleared. Now he up stacks his last three. So between the up stacking and the down stacking, he has to let go, and he does. He begins the first stack with two hands. Now he must begin the down stack of the second stack with two hands, which he does, before moving on to the third stack. So he's cleared here. Now we come up to the first transition in the cycle, which is the 363 three into the 66. Six. And here, he is allowed to touch this stack with his left hand while he's still down stacking with his right hand. He just is not allowed to lift this stack, the first six, um, before this stack gets in a column form. So I see in this frame, he it's, it's a little blurry, but going back one and then going forward, he is already in column form and he's actually not even touching this one yet, he's fine here. And so what we're really looking for here is that top cup on the first up stack there to be going upwards. Yes. Side to side is okay, but upwards is not good until we get the column form on that down stack. That's right. And let me go back one here. So going forward one is when he starts to lift it, and you can see that other three stack is in column form, so this is clean. So he's going to up stack the first six. Again, it's the up stacking phase, so you have to let go in between your up stacks, and he does. He's gonna up stack the next six. All right, so he lets go in between the up stacking and down stacking, and now he's gonna have to down stack the first six with two hands, and then he can down stack the next one anytime after. All right, the up stack begins here. He's gonna put down the single cups, and he has to let go again before he up stacks his 10 stack. And this I see like that here. like both of those before he starts up stacking the 10. Yes, both hands have to let go. I know, and on a does. lot of younger stackers, you see they'll kind of lead real heavy with one hand, and you'll see them putting down that one as they grab into that 10 stack. So we do see a lot there with some more inexperienced stackers. Right, and that would be a scratch. But here I see there's no touching, so we're going to continue. He's going to up stack the 10, and he has to let go in between here as well because he finished his up stack, and now he's about to begin his down stack. That's technically a transition. Yes. And he's clear, so let's look for the stop now. We're looking for making sure there's no wrists on the timer, and we're also checking to make sure they are not holding the cups when they stop the timer. So at this frame right now, you can tell he is not down on the timer yet. His left hand is still up in the air. So let's go one more frame. He may be down here. Clearly this hand is away from the cups. He is not violating anything here. 
This hand, you could tell his fingers are pulled back. But let's go one more frame just to make sure. And he's flat. He is on the timer at this point. So he's he pulled back. He hasn't done any wrist stops because he's pulled back into the timer. Um, on those couple last frames we looked at, the cups aren't moving. His thumbs aren't around the cups. So it looks real clear that he's done a good separation from the cups and then stopped the timer in the correct order. That's right. So this time is clean. Okay, so let's take a look at another video. And I'm gonna walk through this one from start to finish. And this one has several issues, so we're just kinda uh, gonna address them as we go along here. Yes. So she approaches the table here, and she's gonna start with her warm-ups. Now you can see in the beginning she does a little rearranging, and that's allowed. She's allowed to shuffle them, rearrange them, and that does not count as an attempt. So she's gonna begin her first warm-up. Now right away I do see a cup, that white cup there, that looks like it doesn't have any logos on it. Um, I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt and just continue to watch throughout the rest of this video and make sure, you know, maybe the cup turns and I'll see a logo. We'll find out. But for now, I'm going to not call that a scratch just yet. And you'll do that for all the videos. Right? If you see something like that, you make sure you watch all the footage before calling that. That's right. And even if the fastest attempt, the logo wasn't showing or facing the camera during that attempt, as long as I saw the logo turn at some point during the footage, I know it's, it's a clean cup and it's allowed. And all cups need to have a logo on them. So even just this one could disqualify her if there's no logo on that other side. That's right. All 12 have to have at least 50% of the logo still showing. Okay, so she's gonna begin her first war or her first attempt. So let's keep going a little bit more and we're gonna check for that start again. We'll worry about that hand. She's getting pretty close. Okay, so I'm gonna go back and forth between these two frames where I see some movement in this first three stack. And what I also notice going back and forth is this hand right here is still on the timer. This hand has some slight movement, but really only up here in the wrist area. The rest of her hand is still down on the timer as this is moving, which is a clear sign that she is touching the cups as she's starting the timer. And we'll continue to go forward now, and she continues to hold on to that set and as she lifts her hands off. So this would be a scratch for a, an improper start. Only by a couple frames, but it was a close one. But yeah, she was definitely holding those. That's right. So I'm going to keep going. We have separation here between the up stacks. She fixes her fumble. Clear separation here. Takes her hands off again. Starts it with two hands. Starts this one with two hands. And now the transition again. She just has to not lift this stack and it's in column form, she's good to lift it. She separates hands here, and again here. She touches the first with two hands to down stack and finishes here. Let's make sure she lets go of the two single cups. She does before she touches the 10. And she lets go again between the up stack and the down stack. All right, so she, she fumbles her cups now, we know she's about to start over here, um, and that is one of the new rules that you are not allowed to start the whole cycle or whatever the event is if you fumble. Now, what she should have done is just picked up the cups and ended in a 3-6-3 without any further stacking and stop the timer. That would have been a clean run. That would have, because in the down stacking phase, you just need to put everything back. But since she continued, she started the whole thing over from the beginning, what's going to happen now is her attempt here that she, when she stops the timer, she would get that a time assigned to her first attempt. And now she's going to get penalized in her second attempt, and it's going to be a scratch. An automatic scratch. Right. So let's just watch her finish up. Okay, she didn't finish there. She continued on and she did an extra 1101. In this case, she has done the sequence incorrectly. Too much stacking. So she actually doesn't even get this 33.531 for her first attempt. This is a scratch because she did the wrong sequence. So now we continue with her second attempt, but that's scratched because she did extra stacking. And now what she's about to start here is her third attempt. So let's watch that start again. I'm looking for any contact. Right between these two frames, 
Her right hand is lifting up enough that it probably is starting the timer. And I don't see any movement with this three stack here. So I can't prove that she is touching any cups. Looks close, but you don't see that cup move. So you yes. can't call, we don't have enough proof. It's very close, but you're right, not enough proof. So let, let's let her start. She lets go and she fixes her fumble. She lets go. Separation here, two hands, two hands, making sure that it's in column form before it's lifted on the other side and that's cleared. There's separation, separation here. All right, making sure she lets go of that single cup and she does. Okay, she's got to fix her fumble, so she does let go of that single cup, and she's going to fix that. Okay, and she she's letting go here between the up stack and the down stack. So that was a clean fix. It was. And let's check the stop. So let me back up. She comes down. She's not coming down anymore between these two frames, and she is clearly away. These fingers are apart from the cups, and here she's not holding either. The fingers are straight. Clean stop. Okay, so she's gonna continue on, but technically this is now her fourth attempt, not her third. But let's go ahead and watch it anyway. Check the start. Her hand is lifting up enough to where it probably is starting the timer between these two frames. And I don't see any movement again with this set. So it's a clean start. It's close though. Let's go. Fixes her fumble. Let's go. Let's go. Down stacks with two hands for each of those. And transition again. She can touch it over there. She just can't up stack it till now. Oh, so she's got a fumble. She has to put this six back, and she does, and she lets go. But now as she starts to up stack that six, you can see her hand right here is touching this six stack. And right here, this is a hands-on two stacks violation. And she continues to hold it as she up stacks. So that, was a, that would have been a scratch. And there is a way to fix that, but she would have to let go, down stack that first six, and restack it up without touching that second stack to fix that correctly. Yes. And she didn't do that, though. OK, we got two, two hands to start that down stack. We got to fix our fumble. Got it in the column. All right, and she lets go here. And let's check the stop. She's coming down a little bit more. One more frame, she's down. And she's got her fingers far away from that, far away from this. This is a clean stop. But again, that was the fourth attempt, so that would have been scratched automatically. Which is too bad. I think this, in this case, this was her fastest time. It so was. this is what showed up in our database as a potential record. So when that happens, normally you have to just look through the other one, get her next fastest time, her next fastest time, see if they're eligible. Yes, that's right. Okay. And while you were doing all the hard work there, I was keeping an eye on that white cup. I did not see a logo. So that is definitely another scratch for these runs. Yes. That would invalidate all of these runs on its own. Um, I, you know, uh, some of the older sets, they do have a logo just on the one side. Um, so I know some of you really fast stackers, you like to collect those and use them as an anchor cup. If you're doing that, make sure you face it towards the camera. That's all you got to do. Um, yeah, we just have to see it at some point in it. the footage. So that's a pretty easy one to fix. But uh, yeah, I think that's it for the cycle. Yep, that's it. That's a bunch of the key points that we look for during the cycle um, and the major, the major scratches that we find. So... We'll see you on the next videos. We're going to do one for all of the major events. Um, check those out.